Hello, Story Wilson from RSW Solutions. You're looking at a 2008 LR3 Land Rover vehicle. Today I'm very excited because we have a package from my good friends at R0 Industries. Uh, they make air suspension components for various Land Rover vehicles and you know for the past five years, six years, I've been using their products with great results. And today I have in front of us a pair of their specially designed LR3 front air struts and uh, these air struts are special because they've also been um, specially paired with a, a uh, engineered set of Bilstein struts. So we're going to open up this package and see what we have. So r is pretty good in their packaging. They always really, really secure everything in here. So we're going to get this open. Wow. Look at this package. Look at this air strut. It is gorgeous. Well packaged. Wow. That is one very pretty, very, very pretty piece of engineering. It has a nice rubber gator, Bilstein strut, nice CNC machine head. Looks like a nice high tensile steel clamp around the, I believe it's around the rubber air spring. Really impressive product. So let's dig in. We're going to start installing this and uh, go over some of the steps and then a review of how it performs. Hopefully you'll uh, stick around and watch the video. So before we begin installing these great new shocks, we need to discuss some of the tools you're going to need. You're going to need some jack stands, obviously. One of the most important things. You never want to do this uh, without a good set of jack stands. The more the better. There's no such thing as too much safety when you're working in your garage in your own car. Jack stands are key. A couple of jacks. Uh, and you know, you're going to need a really good metric socket set. A good breaker bar. A uh, good torque wrench is a good idea. Some penetrating fluid. You know. Uh, uh, some gloves, good work gloves, hammer, stuff like that. You know, these are all things we're going to need to get into this uh, suspension of this vehicle safely. So, first thing we're going to do is we're going to jack this vehicle up, uh, rest it on the jack stand safely, get it really secure, and then remove the wheel and start going at the wheel well and start looking at uh, the suspension components we're going to have to start disassembling to get these new air struts in place. Hopefully this gives you a better idea of how many jack stands I use when doing something like this and where I put them. So one of the first things we're going to need to do uh, in order to start working on this air strut is we're going to need to depressurize the front air springs. Now if you have access to a diagnostic tool that can perform that operation, by all means skip this step and depressurize the system programmatically. Um, we're going to depressurize the system, we're going to get up into this uh, area of the wheel well, just forward of this panel there is a uh, valve block and it's the crosslink valve block and the crosslink valve block has some air fittings on it that we can we can loosen up and gently and controlled way uh, release the pressure on this air strut before we begin to take it out so we're going to start to remove some of these clips and uh, Phillips heads only remove as much as you need to get down in there uh, you don't need to remove the whole panel uh, the reason why we're doing it here is because it's actually difficult to gain access to the air fittings that are on top of the air strut it's extremely difficult we're going to try to release the air pressure here first to depressurize the front air springs it's a fairly simple procedure the valve block is located right here there are three plastic tabs which go into three rubber grommets on the front bumper and you can fairly easily depressurize the system with a 12 millimeter wrench and the green line uh, goes to the left front air spring and this top black line, this top black line goes to the right front air spring. This bottom black line with this white sticker is the supply line. You can see if you look at it, it actually goes to both. Uh, anyway, so to depressurize the system, it's really simple. You can just begin to crack this Voss connector gently and slowly until you begin to hear air pressure come out. As soon as you hear air pressure come out, you stop. You don't go any further. Because there we go. You can hear the air pressure coming out. And at this point, you uh, just walk away. 
walk away, and in about five, ten minutes later, come back, and the air spring should be depressurized. We're going to do the exact same thing for the right front and left front air springs. Uh, like I said, you stop as soon as you hear this air pressure come out. You don't want this to forcefully rock it off or forcefully detach itself from the, from the valve block here because there's a lot of pressure in this system. So air is escaping, we walk away and let it depressurize. That's it. All right, so before we get started, let's go over some of the tools you'll need and where we're actually going to be attacking uh, this system here to get it, this air strut out. So looking at the new air strut, um, you're going to have 15 millimeter bolts on the top that hold this into the top of the shock tower. You're going to have a uh, 12 millimeter bolt that holds this Voss airline connector in place, so we're going to remove that as well. Uh, this, this of course, you leave alone. You're, you're, you're not going to mess with this uh, shock bolt. And at the very bottom of the strut, the main bolt that holds uh, the bottom of the strut down here into the uh, lower suspension control arm is a 24 millimeter uh, size bolt, and we're going to use a close-ended wrench here to really get on that. Uh, if you have a deep 24 millimeter socket, um, you'll be able to use a, a socket, but it has to be a, a deep socket. Uh, a standard socket won't fit because the bolt is actually a really long bolt that protrudes through. Uh, and then, okay, so we're going to start with the bottom using the 24 millimeter wrench, and we're going to get our old air strut out of the vehicle. With the air spring depressurized, we can now remove this bottom suspension bolt. Now that the bottom bolt is undone on the air strut assembly, we're going to start these top bolts with a 15 millimeter wrench. They can, there are three of them, two of them are somewhat easy to access from the front, and you can start to loosen these. And then we're going to go in the engine bay, most likely, remove a heat shield or two, and attack the third bolt. So we removed the three 15 millimeter bolts on the top of the shock. Uh, the last one is difficult to gain access to, but you can do it. So now we're going to drop it very gently through the opening, just enough so that we can gain better access to the Voss air connector that's on the top of the air strut. You can now see the Voss air connector right there. We have better access to it now, and we can undo it. Okay, we removed the Voss airline with a 12 millimeter wrench. Be careful when you're doing this not to pull the airline uh, down too far, just enough to gain access to the to the bolt, the fitting. Now we can remove the entire air strut assembly out of the wheel well. Here is a side-by-side -side comparison of the old air spring versus the new air spring by r -Naught. The new air spring, uh, which of course is the uh, model number AS-2533, paired with a special engineered Bilstein shock. Uh, great looking Great looking air spring. Uh, I can immediately you'll notice a difference. There's a gator, a protective gator on the on the R not AS2533 model. Uh, that gator is going to be nice because you'll notice on the old air spring there was a considerable amount of rust forming on the bottom of the air strut assembly there. Uh, the R not shock also appears to be a little bit longer. Now I'm not sure if that's just because of the way the two shocks are sitting and that the old air spring, the rubber is you know used to being in this contracted position or not. Uh, we'll see. I don't think there's going to be any difference in the actual wheel travel. I think this is just the old air spring is used to being in this position, therefore it's, it's, that's its resting state, versus the resting state of the r naught is brand new, is fully, fully extended. Other than that, there are really minor little differences, nothing much. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and take steps to reassemble this new r naught AS2533 air strut. So this is the Voss connector. Uh, the Voss connector is a two-piece connector. You have a, uh, a brass collet that is inside and the actual main fitting. So the way you would attach this, or the way you would disconnect it on your uh, existing unit, uh, you would slide this larger brass fitting away from the end of the pipe, which will expose this brass collet, and then you can remove this brass collet from the actual air pipe itself and then reassemble. Being, taking note not to damage the area that's underneath this larger brass fitting, that's where there is an O-ring that seals. That O-ring, you, you don't want the pipe to be damaged where this O-ring interfaces um, 
because then of course it'll leak. It's a good idea to replace it. It means you get new O-rings both on the sealing surface of the pipe and the sealing surface against the air spring itself. Probably the most difficult part of the reassembly process is going to be attaching the air fitting, the Voss air fitting back into the air spring. Uh, it's nice to be able to prop the air spring up on something down below on the ground, keeping it a certain distance from the top of the shock tower and, and reattaching it, uh, getting in here. And once you get the thread started, then it's not so difficult to get the whole thing threaded in. And once you get that Voss fitting all the way attached, then you can push the shock tower back up into place, reattach the bolts on top of the shock tower, reattach the bolt on the bottom of the air thread assembly, and you're pretty much done. The air springs have been fully reinstalled. The air fittings, of course, have been tightened down. All the bolts have been tightened to the proper specifications. The wheels are back on the hubs. And the vehicle is still jacked up off the ground, just a little bit off the ground. So what we're going to do to repressurize the system is we're going to lower the vehicle just a little bit, just a little bit, maybe down to like off-road height. And then we're going to start the vehicle back up and let the air suspension pressurize the air springs for just a few seconds. Just a few seconds, five, ten seconds. And then we're going to turn the vehicle back off and keeping one of the doors open, disable the air suspension. Uh, and then lower the vehicle all the way back down. The idea is that you want a little bit of pressure in the air springs before you lower the vehicle all the way down onto the bump stops. Do not lower the vehicle all the way down to the bump stops if the air springs are, are depressurized. You could damage the air spring. So the idea, we're just going to lower down a little bit so the air suspension is going to attempt to put air in the system and then start the vehicle up. A little pressure in the air springs. Thanks for watching. Make sure to be careful, be safe, and uh, make sure and send emails to myself or are not industries if you have any questions about the installation process. So everything in the vehicle is back together. Uh, first impressions, you know, we, we took the vehicle around for a test drive. First impressions are really good. Uh, I was a little concerned that, that the Bilstein strut would be uh, a little bit harsh in the valving or harsh in the shock absorption. Uh, I've had previous experience with Bilsteins, but this is actually a, a really impressive ride. The Bilstein seems to be engineered correctly for the weight of this vehicle and for the uh, spring rate of this vehicle. Uh, generally, I'm really impressed with the way it rides around. Um, it's almost exactly the same as stock, um, but I think uh, its off-road performance will be better and I think its valving is going to be a little bit nicer on cornering. So uh, first impressions are really, really good. So these are the r not AS2533 shocks, and it's a great shock.